And welcome to the opening World Cup of the 23-24 season. We are in Val Thorence in France and it is a snowy, cold, slightly windy at the top kind of day. But uh, the qualification rounds have taken place and it is absolutely all go here in France. Uh, very exciting to be back in Val uh, We were here this time last year. And uh, it, as you can see, as I was saying, partly cloudy, pretty cloudy, a bit snowy, minus five, although I have heard that it's a little bit uh, colder near the top, minus seven. And it is uh, a, a, a bit of a chilly day. They were up early this morning clearing the track to make sure that it is in prime condition. Um, the women have all finished, the men have finished theirs too. A little bit of competition data for you. Uh, total of 68 meters of vertical. Uh, the top altitude is 2,368. It's a high resort, Val Thorens, which makes it just slightly challenging for those who do not get to uh, work or to train at altitude, but uh, great to see everybody here this week. And a uh, number of gates on the ski down, six. Well, it's going to be an exciting one. Uh, race today. We are, as I say, back in Val and it has just recently regained its title as the world's best ski resort, opening today. It has won it an impressive seven out of ten times in the last ten years.
Uh, some beautiful images there of Val Terence at uh, slightly in slightly sunnier climes. So look at this. This is the senior women as of the end of last year. This is the rankings they picked up uh, this morning, uh, well, last night actually, when they picked up their babes. Emily Harrop, the top of the sprint standings, as well as, uh, if I beg your pardon, overall, as well as the sprint standings. Julia Morada, Celia Periapesi, Axel Gashimalari, not with us this season, but certainly not for now. Anna Alonso Rodriguez, Mariana Yekichikova, Alba Di Silvestro, Johanna Hemer, Alessandra Schmidt and Julia Compagnoni were the top 10 overall in last year. And there you can see the next 10. Sarah Dreyer, Mara Martini, Caroline Ulrich, Ivona Janoschik, Lisa Moraschini, Tiana Paller, Marianne Faton, Laura de Blanche, Marta Garcia Fares, and Katia Mascarona, the top 20 women from last year's overall standings. Um, I mentioned there that Axel Gashimolri not here. Oh, I'm coming back to that because here we have the men. Uh, Thibon Selmé overall last year, uh, twice the bridesmaid, but finally made it to being the top of the tree, followed by Maximilien Drian du Chapois, Rémi Bonnet, uh, Niclo Canclini, Robert Antonioli, Oriol Cardona Col, Paul Verbniak, Arnaud Lieta, Aurélien uh, Gay, and Thomas Bussard. 323 men in the top 10 last year. Very, very impressive results from those young men. Michele Boscacci, Ivan Arnold, uh, Anselm Damavan, uh, Xavier Gachi, Romain Galando, Romain Bussard, William Bombardian, Matteo Favre, Matteo Edalin, and Nadir Maguet. Again, another under 23 men which was seven in the top 20 altogether. It'd be really exciting to see how they carry on into this season. Some of them were in there for their first year, so this will be a test as well. Uh, we are being hosted, if you like, by Olivier Mancio, uh, who is the race director here in Val Terrance, and we are uh, very excited to have his expertise. Is not much he does not know. Uh, Rogelio Marias, Mathias from Spain is our jury president both excellent keepers of the uh, of the craft if you like and here we have what's going to happen this morning semi-finals will be at 11:45 for the women uh, followed by uh, and 12:04 then uh, beg your pardon 11:45 and 12:23 12:04 uh, I'm not entirely sure that graphic is 100% correct, by beg your pardon, uh, but uh, we will uh, keep you informed. Uh, that is, I beg your pardon, it is correct, semi-finals and then finals. What we're going to see very shortly are the heats. Um, they used to be called the quarter-finals, but we've had uh, some change in rules and vocabulary this season, and they are now known as the heats, and we are really looking forward to seeing those start at 10.33 for the women and then at 11 o'clock for the men. So just to clarify, as I uh, was talking over the graphics there, 11.45 for the first semi-final for the women, 12.04 the first semi-final for the men, women's final at 12.23, a men's final at 12.36. And we're going to be with you the whole way through. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been uh, a long time. Tromso was the last time we were together. And oh, look, a tiny bit of sun might be peeking through in Val Terrance. So we will keep our fingers crossed that, that with, for, for that. Um, as I was saying earlier, Val Terrance now officially once more world's best ski resort. It uh, has 150 kilometers of pistes and is quite pretty high up uh, from 2,300 to 3,230. And back to the World Cup information, seven stages this season, plus the European Championships in January in Flen and Chamonix, uh, four Youth Cups and both Asian and North American Championships in March, uh, February and March respectively. This year, the Long Distance World Championships is on the legendary Patrouille des Glaciers from Zermatt to Verbier. That's on the 20th to 21st of April. Uh, but back to what is happening today, as you can see, a lot of snow has fallen overnight. There's a lot of work going on to make sure that the track is absolutely uh, tip-top condition. Uh, with 22 countries registered to start uh, this week or this weekend. Um, Andorra, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada, Chile, China, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Norway, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, 
Switzerland and the United States of America. 80 men competing uh, today in the sprint and 51 senior women, which is, I cannot tell you whether it's a record, but it is a great big number of women competing in the sprint today. Absolutely uh, delighted to see such a big number for in the, the senior women category. So 68 meters of course in total today for both men and women. If you remember last year the rules changed so that men and women uh, skied exactly the same course uh, which has continued and last year here the sprint winners were Emily Harrop, Marianne Faton, Julia Morada in the top three, followed by Celia Peria Pesce and Mariana Igachikova. In the men, Arnaud Lieta, Ivan Arnold, Thomas Bussard, Matteo Favre making it a Swiss top four, with Robin Galando of France tucking in there at number five. Will the Swiss be able to repeat their great uh, red and white victory from last year? Well, we'll see. They're all here. All, all those player and as I hear it all on top form and raring to go it's a slightly sort of different start to the season as there is only one World Cup left in or in this calendar year before we head straight to the European Championships in France in January and some of those who don't sprint or relay are not here this weekend, giving themselves more time to prep for that European Championships. For example, Rémi Bonnet, Xavier Gachet, William Bombardian, all prepping for the European Championships in January. We, I talked briefly about the fact that the quarterfinals are now called the Heat. And that is what they will henceforth be known. A couple of other changes that you might be interested in knowing about the sprint. Although everything else stays the same, uh, the qualification into the final has changed. From today, the first two placed athletes in the semi-finals will go forward, but there will be two lucky losers from the semi-finals. That means the third and fourth fastest athletes from across both semi-finals will make it through. So meaning uh, they could come from the same semi-final or there could be one from each. As you may remember, it used to be three, the top three in each semi-final automatically went through. So things are changing slightly. Slight difference in the sort of the height regulations. The distance from the start to the finish, the first transition transition is now allowed to be up to 50 meters, 50 meters of vertical. My apologies. And the boot pack or the foot part has been shortened to a maximum of 15 meters. So lots going on here. One of the most exciting things is that the women are now uh, numbered from one onwards, number one, two, three, four, five, just as the men. And they will be therefore racing in the same numbers uh, as the men henceforth. So Emily Harrop was in the red number one today. And it was the first time a woman has donned that number which is really really exciting the men will be in blue and the women in green of course the number ones are red just to give them that little bit extra uh, kudos that they deserve and one more change it is relevant for the season rather than for today necessarily but for the under 23 athletes they will still have their overall ranking no race rankings uh, as per last year but there'll be an overall ranking for them as before but this time they will gain whatever points they gain in the senior category they will take with them into their own rank gosh lots to change lots going on there's been some big um updates and so on going on within the federation and some really exciting things happening we are about three and a half minutes away from the first heat women's heat and once that is up i will tell you exactly who is who and what is happening but who you will not see racing this year certainly not at the beginning of the year is Axel Gachet-Molleray. She gave birth to a little girl just earlier this week. So a huge congratulations to her and to Xavier Gachet. Uh, Axel is competing later in the season and we cannot wait to see her back on skis. In the meantime, Axel, uh, if you're watching, huge congratulations from all of us. 
Uh, in other family news, uh, Deb Kirillo Marty is expecting her second child with Werner Marty, and she won't be competing this season either. A massive congratulations to them too. Looking like we're going to start bringing in some of the athletes for the first heat. Uh, here we have it. Heat number one, Emily Harrop of France, Mariana Igichkova of Slovakia, Mara Martini of Italy, Johanna Hemer of Austria, Giulia Compagnoni of Italy, and Swan Kuzden of China are only under 23, and she is a new addition into the under 23, so uh, congratulations to her for making it into the heats on her first senior competition. There she is, closest to us. Emily Harrop in the red bib. Mara Martini in the yellow helmet. Johanna Hemer with the black and white helmet and the red uniform. Mariana Jigorczykova just coming in there in her distinctive Slovakian uniform with the black and green helmet. Emily Harrop was fastest round the course this morning uh, in qualification in a time of 3.56. Behind her was Julia Morada, then Marianne Faton, Alessandra Schmidt and Tatiana Paller. Those were the top five fastest women around the course in qualifying times. You will remember, of course, that there are 30 that are able to qualify, five heats of six. Giulia Compagnoni of Italy. Johanna Hemer of Austria. G has been doing lots of bike and gym training this summer, um, but was set back slightly with a foot infection a couple of weeks ago. Um, but she's excited about the high expectations uh, that have been placed upon her because we, I think we can safely say this could be a really excellent season for her. And um, she tells me that she is um, happy for the high expectations. It means she's up there with the best of the best. So, from left to right, Giulia Compagnoni of Italy, Johanna Hemer of Austria, Mariana Jigorczykova of Slovakia, Emily Harrop, Mara Martini, and Suolang Kyojen of China. And they're off! This is it! Our first televised streaming of the ISMF World Cup, the Vert Modif ISMF World Cup for the season 23-24 and the conditions are tough. It's cold, it's snowing, and uh, it's pretty windy the further up they get. Mariana Yuchikova going into the lead there just ahead of Emily Harrop, but it's a little too early to say. Up through the first set of diamonds, Mariana Yuchikova going right, Emily Harrop going left. The little, ooh, a couple of little slips there from the Chinese athlete. Oh, and also from Johanna Hemer. It is slippy. So much snow out there on the course. No matter how quickly they are managing to clear it, it is still falling fast. Here is Emily Harrop into transition and Mariana Igichikova is just ahead of her on the other side. Johanna Hemer, but it's Mariana Igichikova at the fastest split, Emily Harrop behind her. Emily Harrop barely trotting up those steps. And Suolong Kyojen, China, just behind Johanna Hemer of Austria. Oh, in fact, she was quicker at into transition, but just behind her on these steps here. Giulia Compagnoni and Mara Martini, both of Italy, tucked in behind them. But Giulia Compagnoni coming through strong here. And we will hopefully see, yep, there we go. And it is Emily Harrop, I would say, possibly a nanosecond ahead of Mariana Yigutikova as they head off out of that transition. Johanna Hemer, great transition for her there. Julia Compagnoni in behind her. With Suolong Kujen 
just taking off behind her, Mara Martini. We're just at the back there, so, so slippy. Not ideal conditions for this race. As they head off up to that last bit of on skis, on skins, I should say. And we will wait for them to come in to transition. It looks like Emily Harrop has taken a good lead there over Mariana Yegochikova. They only have to be in the first, the top two, as Emily Harrop comes into transition. Pulls down, heels in, skins off. Just to remind you that uh, the lucky loser qualification counts as it always has done from the heats into the semi-finals. And that is Emily Harp and Mariana Yegichikova out of transition. And a little wobble there from Julia Compagnoni as she picked up her poles, but it was Johanna Hemer and Julia Compagnoni just out there, almost neck and neck. So it'll be interesting to see which of them makes it down into third. Third, of course, is an important place because that's where you can gain your lucky loser spot. But it's Johanna Hamer ahead of Giulia Compagnoni of Italy. As Emily Harrop crosses the finish line with Mariana Yegorchikova in behind her, followed by a bit of a sprint finish there towards the end. Johanna Hemer of Austria takes third. Giulia Compagnone of Italy takes fourth. Looks like Amara Martini of Italy coming in fifth. And Sulong Kujen of China comes in in sixth place. Great, what a great start to this first of the heats in the women's competition here in Valtance at the Vert Modif ISMF World Cup. Emily Harrop, Mariana Yegichikova, Johanna Hemer, Julia Compagnoni, Mara Martini, and Sulong Kujen of China. And we're already, and this is a, a highlight, I beg your pardon, just a quick recap of what happened. It was always Yegochikova and Harrop at the front, two of the best. Last year's overall winner and this year's uh, and the current world and European championship. But, but we're champion. We're into the second heat already. And uh, up there, uh, you can see uh, Alessandra Schmidt, followed by Marta Garcia of Spain. Also in this heat, Alba de Silvestro of Italy, Anna Tibor of Poland, Margot Ravinel and Lorna Bonnell of France. Lorna Bonnell, this is her first race back after giving birth to her daughter earlier this year. So congratulations to her and uh, very, very thrilled to see her here and to have made it to qualification on her first race back. But Alessandra Schmidt, who has been doing a lot of gym work, she tells me to help strengthen those legs and the uh, get her reflexes going. It's quite seems to be the theme. Uh, those who are more all rounders really want to try and do better at the the relay and the sprint, giving them some better chances in both those races and, of course, to get to the Olympics in 2026. And there we have Margot Ravinel in the red helmet of France. Behind her, Lorna Bonnell, uh, Ivona Janoschik. Oh, I beg your pardon, that is, uh, that is Alba de Silvestro behind Margot Ravinel. I beg your pardon. So, Alessandra Schmidt, Marta Garcia Fares, Switzerland and Spain. And off they go. Oh, a little bit of a 
slip there from Alessandra Schmidt, just trying to get her hand in her pole and they need their poles in these conditions. They definitely need their poles as um, Alba Di Silvestro just tucks in there in front of Margot Ravinel. Behind her, Ivona Janusik of Poland and Lorna Bonnell of France. We can be waiting to see as they come up the hill if that has that order has stayed the same. Oh, it's close though. It's now Marta Garcia Fares of Spain ahead of Alessandra Schmidt after she had that tiny little slip with her poles. Alba de Silvestro in not her favorite race. She prefers a long distance, but uh, third here so far. And we will see very soon as Marta Garcia Fares of Spain and Alessandra Schmidt head off down, all being well to take places one and two. And here they go, skiing down very smoothly with Alba Di Silvestro of Italy in third place, who will be hoping for a place at the lucky loser stage. Margot Ravinel of France. And coming across the line, Alessandra Schmidt and Marta Garcia. Fares almost neck and neck. Alba Di Silvestro just in behind her. Slightly slower than um, than Johanna Hemer was by about three seconds, but we shall see. And here comes. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've been saying that was Ivona Janosik. It was Anna Tibor. My apologies. Okay, here we are at the start of the third heat of the women. Let me tell you who's on the start line here. Celia Perrier-Pessé of France, Tatiana Paller of Germany, Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain, Katia Mascherona of Italy, Sara Dreyer of Austria, and Perrine Gendre of France. To the right of your screen in the red, you can see Sara Dreyer. This is not her area of expertise. Tatiana Paller in the brand new German uniform there with the yellow sleeve on one side. And coming up to the front there, Celia Peria Pese and Ana Alonso Rodriguez. Two exceptionally strong sprinting athletes. Tatiana Paller also exceptionally strong in this uh, discipline. But it's Peria Pese and Alonso Rodriguez as they head up into the second set of diamonds. Celia Peria Pese had the opportunity to work this summer, uh, to not work this summer, I should say, and uh, be able to train full time. And she tells me, especially on her weaker points, I'm not entirely sure where those might be, but here she comes into transition first, oh, actually second, just behind Anna Alonso. Oh, and she's away, away quicker out of transition. She was, uh, Celia was third overall last year and she is setting her height sights on an even better result this year. So that's some pretty high sights. Um, in behind her, Anna Alonso, Tatiana Paller, three of the best female sprinters. As Celia Peria Pese takes off. Oh, and Anna Alonso having a bit of an, an 
issue position as Tatiana Paller comes out before her, but then she fails to get her poles on properly. So it's back to France, Spain and Germany. There is Sarah Dreyer of Austria, surely in the running for the vertical title this year. She had a spectacular season last year in that discipline. Uh, her most noticeable, most notable victory uh, being a uh, race being the victory at Schlappming and in front of her home crowd. So such an emotional race. Um, but here she is in the heat of the sprint. A few years ago, she hadn't really even skied that much. And so the vertical was where she started because there isn't much skiing, if any, <laughs> involved. Um, so absolutely fantastic to see her out here doing so well into the heat in the sprint. Celia Peria Pese of France makes it in first. Tatiana Paller has overtaken Anna Alonso into second place. This is going to be exciting, very tight. Everything counts. Oh, Celia Peria Pese having a bit of a making sure her skins are in you can see that what she did there was absolutely uh, correct. She had, saw that there was an issue. She put her poles back on the ground. She sorted out her top and she picked her poles back up. It's very, very, very important to avoid penalties. And here comes Celia Peria Pese. It's going to be so exciting. And behind, so has taken that second place again, followed by Tatiana Paller. Wow, this is going to be a really, really tight finish already and a fast one by the looks of things as well as they come absolutely roaring through and Celia Peria Pese ahead of Anna Alonso followed by Tatiana Paller. Tatiana Paller finishes in 406 which actually puts her into the fastest of the third places so far Katia Mascarona and Sarah Dreyer in behind them, followed by Perrine Gendre of France. And as always, it's all go here. You can see what an absolutely wild day it is in Val Thorens. We have on the start line for this, the fourth heat, Julia Marada, second place overall last year from Italy. Laura de Planche, Luna Dupont, and Candice Bonnel, all of France. Thibaut Dessin of Switzerland in her first year as a senior. And welcome back to the fold, Toby Alexanderson of Sweden. You can see there the yellow legs, the distinctive Swedish uniform. We're absolutely thrilled to see Tove back. She had an Achilles uh, injury last year and couldn't even get on a ski boot, never mind race. So, uh, and she's only had two and a half weeks on snow leading up to this, uh, but clearly still on absolutely cracking form as she takes the lead here, heading up through the first set of diamonds. Julia Morada just There she is, Tovi Alexanderson, followed by Julia Morada of Italy. Now, when Tovi was at the height of her career in the Ski Mountaineering World Cup, one of the things that often let her down was her transitions, but not today. That was super fast, very quick. And there goes Julia Morada, tucked right in behind her. She's not letting her out of her sights. And that is Laura de Planche of France in behind them. Thib Dessin has come from the back to sit. Oh, she's in fifth. And that is the two French women, uh, Luna Dupont and Candice Bonnel. Look at that snow. And Julia Morada, very fast transition there. And out she goes, followed by Tove Alexanderson. 
Laura de Planche. Randy Sponel. It's looking pretty wild out there. And as we saw earlier, it's really, really affecting uh, how grippy their skins are. And I can't, as you probably can't either, see terribly well, but uh, it is, uh, I suspect, Tove Alexanderson still ahead of Julia Murada. It is indeed as we have this great shot into transition here at the top. Down go the poles. Clicking in the boots and the heels. Oh, a different technique from Toby Alexanderson. Ooh. That could be interesting. Toby didn't put down her poles before she clicked in her boots. We'll just have to wait and see. But Tove Alexanderson ahead of Julie Murada. With Laura de Planche behind them, I think. And as we come to the end of the women's heat number four, it's Looks like Julia Murada just overtook Toby Alexanderson there, but it doesn't matter because one and two will get the spot as Julia Murada wins the heat. Toby Alexanderson in behind her. Laura de Planche with a time of 4.07. which makes her the second fastest by my reckoning of the lucky losers. So, Julie Murada, Tobi Alexanderson, Laura de Planche, Candice Bonnel, Thibe Dessin of Switzerland, and Luna Dupont of France. Already raring to go, here we have number five, the last of the heats for the senior women here in Val Thérence at the Vert Modif ISMF World Cup. We have in this one Mayan Fat of Switzerland, her compatriot Caroline Ulrich uh, from Poland, Ivona Janoschik from France, Lena Bonnel, Lisa Moreschini of Italy, and Jadi Dangen of China. So great is such a, to see such a huge Chinese team here and competing under the careful watch and instruction of Oscar Angeloni, former Swiss team coach and they are growing every season and it's just really exciting to see especially to see two of these women up in the heats on the first event Marianne Faton takes the lead as they head through the diamonds it's very close in this race slippy slippy as Jadi Jan Danjen is behind her. Oh, and a fall there from Lena Bonnel of France. And at the moment, we have Mayan Faton in the lead. I think that's Ivona Janoschik in behind her. It is indeed with the white helmet. And Caroline Ulrich in there tra to transition behind them. Marianne Faton in her new bright yellow skis. Ivona Janoschik absolutely powering up those steps. Jaji Dangen in behind, uh, gone into fourth as Karin Ulrich comes through, looking strong, really strong as the two Swiss women go into the lead. Well, we did wonder whether the Swiss were going to be re able to recreate their fabulous Val uh, results from last year and looking good. 
so far in this heat. We've also had Alessandra Schmidt go through as well. Uh, that is Marianne Faton, Caroline Ulrich, Ivona Janoschik, all off one, two, and three, heading up through the, the diamonds for this last bit of skinning. We can hear the course commentator, Christine Cavanier, announcing five minutes to the start of the first of the men's heats. And so that will be the very first time we're seeing the men on snow this season. That's Caroline Ulrich coming into transition there in the lead with Marianne Faton just behind her. Iwona Janoszek of Poland tucked in behind her. Oh no, I beg your pardon, it is not. It is Lena Bonnel of France, I think. And the two Swiss women take off down the hill. All being well, they will make their way into the final into the semi-finals. Caroline Ulrich, this is her second year as a senior. She's obviously also still an under-23, but um, yes, that is We will soon see who's coming across the line there. That is Caroline Ulrich. Uh, that was a fast, a really fast uh, heat. Lena Bonnel of France. And third behind Marianne, uh, uh, Caroline Ulrich and Marianne Faton. Followed by Ivona Janoschik, Lisa Moroschini. and Zhaji Danzhen of China. I think that Lena Bonnell may have just taken the fastest third place of the morning. And I would think that probably puts her and Tatia pa Tatiana Paller into the semi-final. But of course we will wait for the official timings uh, to pop up. That is just my scribblings and uh, musings, uh, completely un, uh, unofficial, provisional is the word I think I'm looking for. So, great start to the day with the, the women we had in uh, the, the, the top two in the first heat where Mar uh, Mariana Egejikova was second, followed uh, in, ahead behind Emily Harrop. Then we had Marta Garcia Fares ahead of Alessandra Schmidt in the second heat, Celia Peria Pese ahead of Anna Alonso, then Julia Murada and Tove Alexanderson, and then in the final heat, Caroline Ulrich and Marianne Faton, both of Switzerland. And we will wait to see who wins those lucky loser places. Okay, so you can hear Christine Cavanier who must be working hard to stay warm out there. It is crazy wild. And what do we have here? Well, we have the men's first heat about to take off. We have Ivan Arnold and Tobias Donnett of Switzerland, Oriel Cardona Cole of Spain, Paul Verbniak of Austria, Luca Tomazzoni of Italy and Jeremy Anselme of France. Jeremy Anselme is in his first year as a senior and obviously an under 23. 
and the younger brother of Thibaut, last year's overall winner. And they're off. Some of the best sprinters in the world here. Ivan Arnold, former world champion. Oriel Cardona Cole, to uh, second place last year in the sprint and the year before. It's Oriel Cardona Cole in the lead there ahead of the two Swiss, Tobias Donnett and Ivan Arnold. Only Oriel Cardona call there. I beg your pardon, was fourth in the sprint overall last year, but is the current world champion from Boitaul last year. And he is first in ahead of Ivan Arnold. And I beg your pardon, that is Paul Verbniak of Austria. Gosh, getting rusty in my... Uh, in my uniforms, but it's Oriel Cardona call absolutely caning ahead there. And that looks like Luca Tomazzoni, Ivan Arnold, Paul Verbniak, Jeremy Anselme, and it's Luca Tomazzoni of Italy away first. And here they come around the corner. Oriel Cardona call still in the lead. Ahead of Luca Tomazzoni, but Ivan Arnold coming in there. Followed by Paul Verbniak as they take off. Two of the best in the world out there first. That was Oriel Cardona Cole, followed by Ivan Arnold. And Luca Tomazzoni has <laughs> had his poles um, wheeled away from him by somebody uh, going out of the transition, which is rather unfortunate, but he managed to pick them up very smoothly there as he left transition. Oriel Cardona Cole with a great lead here over Ivan Arnold in the first heat. And it's Oriel Cardona call for the win ahead of Ivan Arnold. Followed by a bit of a sprint finish there. And it is Paul Verbniak just ahead of Luca Tomazzoni. Paul Verbniak, Verbniak wearing his brand new Red Bull helmet. He has been made a Red Bull athlete this year and uh, a very great uh, excitement for him. He's been doing also doing a lot of sprint training uh, and specific gym training to try and get a bit stronger than this because he is keen on the overall title at some stage in his career and uh, feels he needs to improve on the sprint and relay. Well, relay doesn't count towards the title, but um, certainly counts towards going to the Olympics, as we know. Heat number two. Matteo Favre, oh, it's a very Swiss final uh, heat. Uh, Matteo Favre, Arnaud Gasser, Robin Bussard and Loïc Dubois of Switzerland. And it is Robin Galando and Pablo Giner of France. On the far left, you can see Arnaud Gasser. I can tell you, second from the right is uh, Roba Bussard.
Now you can see how slippy it is. Come out there. So much snow under their skis. That's Loïc Dubois and Thomas Bussard, followed by Arnaud Gasser. A bit of uh, argy bargy there with uh, a, one of the French athletes. Was uh, Romain Galando. Loïc Dubois of Switzerland into his first season as a senior. Robin Galando of France out behind him. Robin Bussard, Mathieu Favre, Arnaud Gasser, and Pablo Giner. It's super close. It's really close. It is not like the last one we just watched with a clear winner. This is a fight, a real fight. Uh, you can hear the course commentator playing off a little bit the French-Swiss rivalry um, because it is a very French-Swiss heat that we have here for Swiss and two French athletes. And here they come. Loïc Dubois just saw the slight. I know that's Matteo Favre in the grey helmet. He's come absolutely thundering through there. Followed by Robin Galando. Matteo Fab always so excited when he does well. He is not one to be hiding his feelings, and neither is Robin Galando, actually. So that'll be. Uh, well, it's Pablo Giner who takes it ahead of Robin Galando with Matteo Favre in third. Well, that is interesting. Pablo Giner takes first. Robin Galando in second. Matteo Favre of Switzerland, third. And I can tell you that that was a very much faster time, almost 10 seconds faster than the heat before in terms of the third place. I always like to keep an eye on that. Um, this heat, let me see, I think I can spot the Belgian uniform of Max Drian. I have also up with him, Nicolo Canclini of Italy, Florian Sotel of France, Thomas Bussard of Switzerland, Finn Hirsch, Finn Hirsch of Germany and Andreas Meyer of Austria. It's a multinational heat. Italy, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany and Austria. Christine Cavanier calls for silence. Thank you, Mark.
And they're off. This is the third heat of five for the senior men. As Thomas Bussard uh, comes into the lead ahead of Max Drian and, uh, in fact, I think it could be Florian Sautel. Well, it's neck and neck between those two, between France and Belgium for second place at the moment. Finn Hirsch there in the new German uniform, Andreas Meyer, just right there, just gone past their screens. Niclo Canclini taking the only one taking the right. Thomas Bussard ahead of Max Drian, Florian Sautel, as Niclo Canclini and Finn Hirsch go off up the right hand side, as well as Andreas Meyer. Thomas Bussard in his second year as an, uh, an under-23 and senior, obviously, uh, came 11th in the sprint overall last year, had a cracking season. Third here last year. But has just had a bit of a wobble there in transition. Oh no, something has gone very wrong for Thomas Bussard of Switzerland and he has lost his lead. How unfortunate. But as we always say in the sprint, it ain't over till it's over because anything can happen. It is quite hard to come back from, um, but we have had numerous examples in the past of that not being the very last uh, thing. And oh, it's Max Drian into the lead for Belgium, followed by Florian Sotel. I beg your pardon, Niclo Canclini of Italy, my apologies. Florian Sotel of France in behind them, Finn Hirsch. Oh, very quick there from Niclo Canclini as they're just absolutely neck and neck. But Max Rio manages to put him off as he comes down there, still trying to get his poles on. Max Rio and Niclo Canclini, Belgium, Italy. Max Gion currently second overall in the world in the world ranking and second in the overall World Cup last year as it is Niclo Canclini ahead of Max Drian and Florian Sautel. Florian Sotel did that in 3.14, currently making him the second fastest of the third places. As always, it is absolutely non-stop here at the sprint race. We are already lined up and ready to go for the fourth heat for the senior men. I can tell you in this one, oh, there's some big hitters. We've got Arno Lieta of Switzerland, Thibaut Anselme of France, Robert Antonioli of Italy, Basile Ducouret of France, Florian Ulrich of Switzerland, and Noé Rogier of France. Three from the home nation in this heat. Arno Lieta, of course, Last year's overall sprint winner, the winner here, uh, the winner in Tromso, the winner in Schladming, the winner in Val Martello, uh, the winner in Ponte di Legno, the winner here last November. Um, and just only one non win last year was in Morgin. He was second behind Oriol Cordona Call, but he had an absolutely, an, almost a clean sweep last year and uh, took home the sprint title. And not for the first time. Thibaut Anselme, third 
overall in the sprint. In the sprint rankings, I should say, from last year. And there is Arno Lieta. Just ahead of Thibaut Anselme. There's Robert Antonioli on the right. Not his favorite discipline. He's more of a long distance man. But uh, still in there as Arno Lieta takes the lead ahead of Thibaut Anselme, who not looking so as smooth perhaps around those diamonds, but still gaining, gaining, gaining. There is Thibaut Selme, last year's overall winner. Very keen to hang on to his uh, title this year. He's the defending champion. And look how fast Arno Lieta was out of that transition. Absolutely astonishing. And it is Lieta and Anselme, head of Noé Rogier, Robert Antonioli, Basile Ducré and Florian Ulrich. Very smooth as Arno Lieta takes off with Thibaut Selmé in hot pursuit. Now, if you've listened to me commentate on the sprint before, you will have heard me talk about how uh, Thibaut Selmé often starts near the back and makes it all the way through uh, the field, but not so in this particular heat. He's been right up there behind Arno Lieta right from the start. So uh, could we be seeing a different tactic, a different fitness, or is it just this particular heat? Well, we shall see because I'm sure this is not the last um, race that we will see from Thibaut Selmé today. Definitely not this season. Here we go, last transition and Arno Lieta looking very smooth. Thibaut Selmé equally as smooth, just in behind him. And Florian Uri has come right from the back to sit in the third spot there. And so it's looking like Switzerland, France, Switzerland at the moment. Florian Uri, of course, the brother of Caroline Uri, who was uh, came in second. Uh, behind Marianne Faton in one of the in the last of the women's heats, and Arno Lieta comes across the line, followed by Thibaut Anselme and Florian Ulrich. But that was not perhaps the fastest of the heats. So Florian Ulrich is the slowest third place we've seen thus far at 380. I beg your pardon. Um, I'm losing my marbles and I can tell you that he came in in 314. So it will be between him and uh, Sotel for which is the faster 314. By my unofficial calculations, looks like Florian Sotel is the second fastest with Matteo Favre, the, the fastest of the third positions going in towards that lucky loser spot in the semi-finals. Right, who have we got coming up now? We have got Inigo Martinez de Albornoz Marquez of Spain, Patrick Perton of Switzerland, Baptiste Ermenreich of France, Hansine Akleta of Norway, Ott Ferrer Martinez of Spain, and John Kistler of Switzerland. John Kistler into his first season as a senior, as an under-23. But some of these are 
some very experienced senior athletes with a lot of senior competition under their belts. And it is Inigo Martinez and Patrick Periton, I think. This is the last of the men's heats. If you've just joined us, we are calling them heats. They were formerly the quarterfinals. If you're wondering at what stage we're at, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. We're in Valterans. This is the first Vert Modif ISMF World Cup of the 23 24 season, and it's pretty wild out here. As we see Inigo Martinez coming into transition. And yeah, really quite far ahead there. Just behind him, his compatriot, Ot Ferrer Martinez. And that is the red helmet of Baptiste Elmenreich, who is thundering through the field there. With Patrick Periton, I believe, in behind him. And Inigo Martinez is off. In the white uniform there, that is Hansing Ekleta of Norway. Oh, Betty Semenreich, not had a good transition there, unfortunately. Here we go, Inigo Martinez, ahead of Ot Ferrer, Spain from Spain. Inigo Martinez takes a little glance behind to check to see who is how far away his compatriot is as it is Spain from Spain as they head down and this is the final of the men's heats just heard the course commentator saying that there is going to be a little break now uh, between this heat and the first of the women's semi-finals and here we go as we see Inigo Martinez Ot Ferrer of Spain John Kistler of Switzerland. Fantastic result for him. And then Hansing Ekleta, Baptiste Elmenreich, and not very happy with his performance, Patrick Perretin. John Kistler did that in a time of 3.18, so I think that puts him out of the that puts him out of the running for the lucky losers. But we shall see. Well, gosh, what a morning. Snow, cold temperatures, there's lots of slipping, uh, some familiar faces missing and some familiar faces returning to us. What a great start to the morning it has been. We've had five, female, five heats for the senior women, five heats for the senior men. And uh, if I can just remind you that the two winners from each of the heats and for the men, Oriol Cardona Cole, Ivan Arnold, followed by Pablo Giner, Robin Galando. Uh, in the third heat, Nico Can Niclo Canclini and Max Gion. In the fourth heat, Arnolieta and Thibon Selmay. And we've just seen finishing there uh, Inigo Martinez and Ot Ferrer, both of Spain, into the semi finals.
And we're in Val Terrance. You can see that it is buzzing. It's opened today. It's its first day of the season. Congratulations. And what an absolutely bumper bumper uh, day to be starting. There we can see the results of the first heat for the women. Second heat. Heat number three for the women, Peria Pese and Alonso Rodriguez. Straight through. Julia Morada and Tove Alexanderson make it through from heat four. Caroline Ulrich and Marianne Faton from Switzerland make it through to heat five. And we will soon be able to see I can tell you, oh, as Dodd Leps get back to that, the heat one results for the men, Cardona Call and Ivan Arnold, Pablo Giner and Robin Galando, from, both from France, through from heat two, heat three, Max Drian and Niclo Canclini. Through from heat for Arnolietta and Thibaut Anselme. And the final heat saw so the two Spaniards, Inigo Martinez del Bornos Marquez and Ot Ferrer Martinez, through to the semi finals. So we're having a small break while they check the course, while the athletes get themselves ready. Um, I can tell you that the two lucky losers coming through in the women's semi-finals are Lena Bonnell, who got that in the very final heat, and Tatiana Paller, who came through third in the third heat. So those are the two lucky losers. Just a little bit of an overview here. That was the very first heat for the women. Two of the natural favorites there, Emily Harrop and Mariana Igachikova, right from the start, as we'd imagine. Rivals on the track on the sprint course for many years. They've had some unbelievably exciting battles. Marta Garcia Perez and uh, Alessandra Schmidt in the heat number two. This is heat number three with Peria Pessé, Celia Peria Pessé of France, coming down there with Ana Alonso Rodriguez. Two of them were battling that out all the way round. Toby Alexanderson back from her season long Achilles injury last year. She and Julia Murada make it through to the, the semi-final from the fourth heat. And then in the final heat, we saw the two Swiss athletes Marianne Patton and Caroline Ulrich.
Oriol Cardona Cole and Ivan Arnold making this very first of the men's heats. Very exciting. Heat number two. Now, this was an interesting one. Switzerland, four athletes from Switzerland, two athletes from France. It was looking very, very good there for a while for uh, Thomas Bussard and then I beg your pardon from, uh, for Arnaud Gasser and Mathieu Favre was in the lead for a bit and then he uh, lost out to Pablo Giner and Romain Galando. My apologies, here is the problem that Thomas Bussard had in the fourth, in the third heat as Max Drian and Niclo Canclini fought it out for places one and two with Florence Hotel of France in behind them. Heat number four with two of the very best, Arno Lieta and Thibaut Anselme. As they took one and two respectively in heat number four. Oh, I didn't see that, that Patrick Perton had lost a ski um, at the beginning there of that heat. And this heat was brought home by the two very strong Spanish athletes, Inigo Martinez and Ot Ferrer. And that, as they say, was that for the heats. We're waiting to see who has made it through. Ah, I can tell you, I've been in front of me. Unofficially, of course, we will wait to see uh, when the uh, timings come up. But the two fastest lucky losers were Matteo Favre of Switzerland in the heat number two and Florian Sotel of France, who was in heat number three. Those are the two lucky losers for going forward into the semi-finals.
Hello and welcome back. We had a small break there while we prep for the first of the women's semi-finals. We're here in Val Torrance. If you've just joined us, thank you for being here. It is, of course, the first, the opening weekend of the Vert Modif ISMF World Cup of 23-24. And as you can see, it's a pretty snowy, cold day out on the course there. Uh, the team doing an amazing job at keeping the track clear for the athletes, but we have seen a few slips. You can tell that it is very, very snowy out there indeed. We've had some exciting action already this morning. Some of the great, uh, some of the great names out already in action for this very first and quite early World Cup. We're the only one, this is the only one happening this calendar year. The next competition will be in Flen and Chamonix as a joint competition. That will be the European Championships in January. And uh, you can see some of the competition data there. We are at pretty high altitude here in Valterrance. It's 2,368 meters at the top of the course. Um, as I was saying earlier, it's quite a high altitude for those who don't necessarily get to train so high up, but it's uh, certainly be good for the old red blood cells. Um, and that is, uh, we can see, as I understand it, the total meterage of the course elevation is 68 meters. We are a minute and a half away from the first of the semi-finals, that's the, me the women. Then at four minutes past 12, we'll have the first of the men's semifinals. And then 12.23, we will be uh, have the finals for the women, followed by 12.36 finals for the senior men. It seems to have gone so quickly already. Uh, it's just so great to be back and to be uh, back on here in Val -Torrance which looks a little bit like it's a bit brighter, but uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll not get too hopeful. Here is the start list for the first semi-final for the women. Emily Harrop of France, current overall champion, defending her title. Mariana Jigicova of Slovakia, Alessandra Schmidt of Switzerland, Marta Garcia Fares of Spain, Lena Bonnell of France and Alessandra Schmidt of Italy. I beg your pardon, of Switzerland. Gosh. Uh, Lena Bonnell is in here as the lucky loser from the heats. That on your left there is Celia Pia Pese. Next to her, number 17, Alessandra Schmidt of Switzerland. Mariana Yegachikova in the green and black helmet. Emily Harrop in the red number one bib. Marta Garcia in the red a uh, Spanish suit with the grey helmet and on the far side of her you will see uh, Celia, Pe uh, beg your pardon, uh, Lena Bonnet. And they're off. It is the start of the semi-final for the women. Uh, if you weren't here, oh no, and an absolute shocker for Emily Harrop as she loses a skin uh, just out the gate. Well, that is going to put a cat among the pigeons. Uh, let's see how she manages to get back from that. Uh, it looks to me like it may still be loose, which is could be pretty unfortunate as Mariana Yegichikova takes the lead there from Alessandra Schmidt, Mar Marta Garcia Fas, and number uh, two, I think that was Celia Pere FSA there, uh, and Lena Bonnell just behind them. No sign, there's Emily Harrop as she comes thundering up through those diamonds. This will be an absolute battle for her to catch up to these incredibly strong women. What an unfortunate start to her first semi-final of the season. But look at that. Look how she is absolutely thundering up there. However, Mariana Yegorchikova is keeping the lead. And we will soon see who is first in. It was Mariana Yegorchikova a good few seconds ahead of her competitors. Lena Bonnell of France. Wow, what a great comeback up the, the, from, from her. Uh, Marta Garcia Fares, Celia Pia Pese, Alessandra Schmidt, and not often we see this, Emily Harrop sitting at the back. 
uh, after that skin's mishap. But she is thundering up here. She will be giving it her absolute everything. As Mariana Yegachikova, the current European and world champion, goes into transition first. Marta Garcia skidding into transition there on her boots. And Emily Harrop, look at that. What a Oh, she's just not having any luck at all with that skin. I think that that was the skin that gave her the trouble right at the start. Whoa, it's now got. And I think she's given up. I think she has said enough is enough. Oh, how unfortunate for Emily Harrop. What a shocker on the very first race of the season. And that skin is properly off now. And we will see what has happened to the rest of the field. Mariana Yegochikova here, still in the lead for Slovakia. Behind her, Celia Peria Pesce and Lena Bonnell, both of France. Marta Garcia Fares of Spain coming in fourth. Alessandra Schmidt after a strong start, just not quite keeping up with the sprint specialists there. She is one of the athletes that has been doing a lot more strength training to try and get stronger at this, but these women uh, are absolutely some of the best at the sprint as Mariana Yegochikova holds off Celia Peria Pese and Lena Bonnell because these are the two, these are the new rules we're looking at here. The first two will qualify for the final and the fastest third place and fourth place over the two semifinals will get into the uh, final. But look at that, it's absolutely absolutely cracking across this line here and I think it's going to be Celia Peria Pese ahead of Mariana Yegichikova and Lena Bonnell absolutely phenomenal with Marta Garcia Fares in fourth <clears throat> Alessandra Schmidt in fifth and an unfortunate and not great start to her season a DNF from Emily Harrop And you can see that is the moment when Emily, Har Emily Harrop's first sk skin first comes off and then at the second time it was game over. So definitely through to the final, Celia Peria Pese of France, Mariana Igachikova of Slovakia and we will have to wait and see a 3.57 time, see how fast that is. Uh, for Lena Bonnell to see if she makes it through in the new rules. It could, of course, also go to Marta Garcia Fares. That is the excitement of the new system, the new rules. It'll be the third and fourth fastest across the two final, the semi finals. Well, there's our first upset of the day and of the season. Um, Harrop not finishing the sprint race. How terribly, terribly unfortunate. Strong racing for the rest of these women, though, women. And um, we will see how the rest of that pans out for them. Here we are, semi-final number two. Marianne Faton of Switzerland, Julia Morada of Italy, Tatiana Paller of Germany, Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain, Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland, and Tove Alexanderson of Sweden. Now, this is hard to call because all of these women are sprint specialists. Really, really strong. Obviously, Toby Alexanderson has been out for a whole season. 
But there is Tatiana Paller. High hopes for her in the sprint category this season as she takes the last place on the start line. I think on the left there, that is Caroline Ulrich, if I'm not mistaken, then Tovi Alexanderson. No, I beg your pardon, Anna Alonso, then Tovi Alexanderson, Caroline Ulrich, Julia Morada, Marianne Faton, and Tatiana Paller. Silence is called by the course commentator. Thank you, Barb. And they are off. This is the I'm second of the good. women's semi finals here in Valterrance for the first of the World Cups of the 2023 uh, 24 season as uh, Marianne Paton takes her fairly habitual place at the front with Caroline Ulrich, her compatriot in her second year as a senior, as an under 23. And beside her, Tove Alexanderson and Tatiana Paller bringing up third and fourth. Julia Morada right in behind and Ana Alonso Rodriguez. This is an insanely competitive and super strong semi-final. These are quite frankly, best of the best many of these racers uh just uh, so exciting so let's see how this goes the weather appears to be getting even worse but we are not long away from this competition being over so let's hang out in the snow and see how we get on as marianne Faton of switzerland heads into the transition can't See, but yes, she has Caroline Ulrich not far behind her. Tovi Alexanderson seems to be just ahead in the thing there, uh, the transition there. Looked like Anna Alonso had a little bit of issue getting her skis into her pack, so that will have cost her a little bit of time. And here comes Tovi Alexanderson, who's only had two and a half weeks on skis this year, um, and it seems to be on absolutely cracking form. And Marianne Faton has had an absolute shocker. Here we go again. Another favorite. This time she's lost her skis, leaving Caroline Ulrich ahead of Tove Alexanderson as they head into the last skinning section. Julia Morada in third, Tatiana Paller in fourth, Anna Alonso in fifth. Here comes Marianne Faton to try and claw back as much of the time that she can. And um, Anna Alonso, not a great transition from her there. And it's a bit slow going with Julia Morada. Uh, having slipped, I think, by the looks of things, or just slowed up a little bit there. What an unfortunate uh, semi-final for Marianne Faton. Oh, and she's down as well. Oh my gosh. Are we about to see a second DNF in the second semi-final? I can't believe it. No, 100% not DNFing. Keeping going, just a little bit slowly my word it's all happening today and Tove Alexanderson has overtaken Caroline Ulrich by a significant margin in that last section looking super strong and here comes Caroline Ulrich in her second year as I said a little minute ago as a senior athlete and under 23 and Julia Morada in third as Tove Alexanderson takes off in a clear gap, with a clear gap. Caroline Ulrich behind her. Look at the visibility. Well, gosh, I, I, I don't know what to say. A DNF for Emily Harrop and 
two mishaps for Marianne Faton, two of the best sprints, female sprinters. The conditions are tough and as we always say, anything can happen in a sprint. But uh, that I think is a first for me to see both women's semi-finals have such big mishaps. As Tovi Alexanderson comes across the line ahead of Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland and Julia Murada of Italy, Tatiana Paller of Germany, Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain. And Julia Murada was actually slower. Both of those third and fourths were slower than the two third and fourths from the last semi final. So, again, unofficially, I would potentially say that Lena Bonnell and Marta Garcia are through to the final as the lucky losers, but that is, again, my scribblings. I am never to be relied upon in math so we will wait for the official timings and see but that is my uh, thoughts on the subject my word um, two semi-finals down the women's semi-finals are done that seemed to go so quickly with such a lot of mishap but the results of that last one were Tovi Alexanderson of Sweden back after a year's absence takes the win in that semi-final Caroline Ulrich, Julia Morada, Tatiana Paller, Anna Alonso Rodriguez and quite far behind because of a couple of fairly major mishaps, Marianne Faton of Switzerland, not where we normally see her at all in, uh, in these uh, cat um, rankings. So let's look forward we will be doing the first semi-final for the men in around about five minutes as the weather gets wilder you can see people trying to warm themselves up on your screen there it is a pretty chilly day out there in Val Torrance up at 2300 meters a view of the Japanese team there So this is a recap of the first of the semi-finals there. Emily Harrop lost her skin and then lost it again, um, resulting in a DNF for her. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a DNF on a sprint in such circumstances. But Mariana Yegichkova, current European and world champion, comfortably brings that home. No, she didn't. She nearly brought it home. <laughs> um, but she was pipped to the post by uh, Celia Piaia-Pesi. And then we had the second semi-final where Marianne Faton was out in front, stro leading strong. Oh, I didn't see that when she left transition, that her ski was away out the back. That would have explained it. It hadn't been put in properly. It slipped past the loop on her skis and then she caught her right ski in the corner of the diamonds and went down. That was quite a crashing fall. She did finish, but she just took it easy and uh, got to the end. As Toby Alexanderson, back from a year of injury, takes the win for that semi semi-final with Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland right in behind her. So here we have the start list for the first of the men's semi-finals, Ivan Arnold of Switzerland, 
Aurel Cardona Col of Spain, Matteo Favre of Switzerland, Robin Galando of France, uh, Maximilien Drion du Chapois of Belgium, and Pablo Giner of France. Another very powerful sprint here. Ivan Arnold, Coral, uh, Aurel Cardona Col, Matteo Favre, Robin Galando, and Maximilien Drion. Very, very, very experienced uh, sprinters, and Pablo Giner, uh, an up and coming in in the sprint scene scene sound makes it sound very dramatic and cool uh in this <laughs> as a sprinter is obviously what i meant to say um but what a great great uh semi-final this is going to be Coming out now, Pablo Giner. Robin Galando likes a bit of a swagger, does our Robin. Uh, Max Dion of Belgium. Matteo Favre from Sion in Valais in Switzerland. And Ivan Arnold also of Switzerland. Ivan Arnold has twice been world champion in 2017 and in 2021 and runner-up in 2019. Reasonably consistent season last year, a couple of sixth places, but mostly in the top four. That's him on the far right with the white helmet. Next to him, Matteo Favre of Switzerland, Aurel Cardona Col in the black helmet, Pablo Giner in the red helmet for France. Robin Galando there in the other French uniform with the white helmet and who we cannot see is Max Drian off to the left. Oh yes, we can see, I beg your pardon. That was my screen. And they're off. A very, very fast start from the two Swiss men there on the far right. As Matteo Favre and Aurel Cardona call battle it out for first there with Max Drian coming powering through. Robin Galando behind them, Pablo Giner and Ivan Arnold in at the back. Looks like Aurel Cardona call reaches the diamonds before Max Drian, followed by Matteo Favre. Well, the drone is back up, but not doing us much use <laughs> in these conditions. There is Aurel Cardona Cole coming into transition. Oh, yes, with quite a good lead there over Max Drian. That is Matteo Favre in behind them. Robin Galando in fourth. Pablo Giner and then Ivan Arnold. Aurel Cardona Cole, we saw in his heat did exactly this, uh, absolutely powered away from the rest of the pack. Clearly on exceptional form, very fast through this section. He is very good on the steps as well. It's one of his um, superpowers. And Max Mion just dropped back in third there. Pablo Giner, I beg your pardon, Robin Galando going into second. What a day here in Val Um So far, oh, is, it the, is it the commentator's curse if I say so far no drama in the men's semi-final? Especially since I can't actually tell you what's happening right now. Uh, here we go. Aurel Cardona call with a really strong lead. One of the Spanish coaches running after to film him there by the looks of things. 
and Oriel Cardona Cole comes in there. With Robin Galando and Max Drion in second and third, Ivan Arnold has pushed through from back in the back. Matteo Favre seems to have tired, and uh, as Robin Galando takes a quick glance behind him, because he wanted to just see who how close was behind him. Oriel Cardona call convincing lead there with Robin Galando and Ivan Arnold I think gosh it's been all change at the in the third spot there as we see Oriel Cardona call come across ahead of Robin Galando and Ivan Arnold who came from the back Max Drian dropped down there into fourth small shake of his head he'll not be pleased with that and in comes Matteo Favre who will also be disappointed because he was looking super strong at the beginning there and Pablo Giner bringing up the rear uh, in sixth place So there we have the results. Oriel Cardona Call of Spain wins the semi final, the first semi final. Roma Galando, Ivan Arnold in second and third. Uh, with Max Drion and Matteo Favre and Pablo Giner bringing up the second half of the field. So Ivan Arnold did that in 316. Uh, Max Drion did it in 318. So we are going to have to see how the other semi-final plays out to see who gets that brand new rule of being the lucky loser into the final. A few minutes away now from the second of the men's semi-finals and then the women's final will be at 12.23 local time and the men's at 12.36. Yes, it was a, a, a semi-final with a lot of mix, mixing around there, other than Oriel Cardona Call, who was clearly out in front the whole time. There was a lot of changing around. Uh, Ivan Arnold came from the back to come in third. Max Gion was third at that stage, but he must have had a not terribly successful transition because he was fourth in the end as they came across the line. Okay, let's go. The last semi-final of the day. We have Arno Lieta of Switzerland, Thibaut Selmé of France, Niclo Canclini of Italy, Florian Sotel of France, Inigo Martinez of Spain, and Ott Ferrer Martinez also of Spain. Once again, a super strong semi-final. Last year's overall sprint winner, Arno Lieta. Thibaut Selmé, last year's overall winner and third in the sprint. Niclo Canclini, one of the strongest Italian sprinters. Fifth in the sprint rankings last year. Currently studying to be a lawyer. One more year to go and is uh, part of the Carabinieri team, the Italian police team. And has had a great summer of training, so I hear. As the snow continues to absolutely thunder down here in Val Terrance. You can see everybody trying to keep warm there. And the flags are fluttering, so it's pretty windy. It wasn't too windy at the start and finish lines earlier on, but it looks like 
that is no longer the case. And that's Arnolieta in the middle there. So on the left we have Ot Ferrer, Niclo Canclini in the white helmet, Arnolieta in the middle there in the red with the tall red with the black helmet. Thibaut Anselme, yellow helmet, yellow skis. And then we have Inigo Martinez next to him. And on the far side, we have Florian Sotel of France. Take your mark. And they're off as Arnolietta goes straight into the lead. You can see the very different styles there of Arnolietta and uh, Inigo Martinez. Much more of a running style from Arnolietta, more gliding from Martinez. Oh my goodness! And that is Florian Sotel taking a bit of a trip. Arnolietta heads up to the right, followed by Thibaut Anselme on the left. That, I think, is Ot Ferrer has gone ahead of Inigo, uh, no, I beg your pardon, Inigo Martinez, followed by Ot Ferrer. No, I was correct. It is Ot Ferrer ahead. There we go, Ivan Arnold in those very long levers, managing to gallop himself up those steps but look at Thibaut Anselme go my word this is how he did so well uh, in one of the final races I think last year I think it was in Tromso by absolutely galloping up the steps and he is really giving Ivan Arno, uh, Arnolieta a run for his money that is for sure in behind that them the two Spaniards as Arnolieta leaves first followed by Thibaut Anselme then that was Inigo Martinez and I think Nicole Canclini in fourth. Ot Ferrer not having the fastest transition there. And Florian Sotel just in at the back there after that bump into one of the posts on the diamonds. And you wouldn't believe when I saw the footage of uh, Valterance yesterday, it was bluebird and glorious. Uh, but at least there is snow. It's always a good sign for the season as Thibaut Selmay has gone into the lead here in the semi-final ahead of Arnolieta. With Inigo Martinez in behind them, Niclo Canclini. But it's a slow transition for Thibaut Anselme, because he has now let uh, Inigo Martinez go into second place as well. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But Arnolieta has a clear lead ahead of Inigo Martinez, and it's going to be a battle to get down as quickly as possible for that coveted lucky loser spot. as they come around the corner and we can see that almost a dead heat there Arnolieta and Inigo Martinez with Thibaut Anselme in behind them and Niclo Canclini followed by Ot Ferrer and Florian Sotel let's have a little look at the times Thibaut Anselme did that in 3.16. Ooh, so did Ivan Arnold in the last one, so we'll have to see. And then a 3.20 for Niccolo Canclini. There we are, just having a look there. I think that, if I am correct, 
it's going to be Maximilian Drion, uh, no, I beg your pardon, Ivan Arnold and Thibaut Anselme that are going to make into the final as the lucky losers. Again, we shall wait and not rely on my maths. But you can see that the fans are out, despite the fact that it is a, quite patently a pretty, what can be described as a pretty grotty day. Arnolieta takes the win ahead of Inigo Martinez de Albornoz Marquez. Tibon Selme comes in third after not a great transition at the top. Er, um, Niccolo Canclini in uh, fourth. Ot Ferrer Martinez in fifth. And Florian Sotel finishing off in sixth place. And still, it keeps snowing here in Valterrance in France. As we wait, I think we've got about hmm, five minutes. Let me see, where are my timings? Yeah, just about five minutes until the women's final, which is going to be exciting, but also slightly unusual, because we will be without... Emily Harrop. In the women's final coming up, we will at which will take off at, as you can see there, Emily Harrop had that terrible mishap. Not one, but two. Um, anyway, in about five minutes at 12.23 local time in France, they will, we will have Celia Peria Pesce, Mariana Yegachikova, Caroline Ulrich, Lena Bonnell, Marta Garcia Fares, and Tove Alexanderson the two lucky losers getting into the final for this very first time that this has happened are Marta Garcia and Lena Bonnell, both from the first semi-final. And this, we also saw a bit of an incident here from Mayan Faton, surely one of the favorites, and she lost a ski on the foot part. And then you can see here, just as ah, she tripped over the front of her own ski. I thought she had hit the post, but actually looks like she put her left ski over her right ski and just went crashing down. Leaving Tovi Alexanderson free to win this second semi-final. And this is the first of the men's semi-finals. Oriel Cardona Call putting in a very powerful performance. No great drama in this one, just a lot of changing around in the field as Oriel Cardona Call takes it in front of Robin Galando and then Ivan Arnold and Max Drion. And there we have it in the women's final. Celia Peria Pete of France, third overall last year in the World Cup standings. Mariana Egerchikova of Slovakia, the current European and world champion. Lena Bonnell of France, Tovi Alexanderson, world champion orienteer from Sweden who is back from injury. Caroline Ulrich in her second year of uh, senior competition and Marta Garcia Fares of Spain. There's Tove Alexanderson. Lena Bonnell. 
Mariana Jegicikova, Karolin Ulrich, and Lena Bon. I beg your pardon, that was Celia Peria Pese that went before. I do beg your pardon. And Marta Garcia Fares. Lena Bonnell had a very lovely long break at the end of last season and uh, is one of the other one of the athletes prepping hard for a sprint and relay, hoping to get to as many finals as possible. Well, well done, Lena. You have got one of your um, goals for the season is already uh, in place. You are in the final and hoping for podiums. So fingers crossed she can make it two from two. Uh, but also looking forward to long distance races, she tells me the PDG for the long, the Patrick de Glacier for the long distance uh, world championships. On the left there, Marta Garcia Fares of Spain. Uh, next to her, Mariana Jagicikova of Slovakia. In the middle there, Celia um, Peria Pese from France. Toby Alexanderson of Sweden. Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland. And Lena Bonnell of France. This is the women's final. We are in the silence phase. Thank you, Mark. And they're off. This is the final. The women's final for the first sprint race, the first race of the Wurtmodif ISMF World Cup 23-24. In absolutely chronic conditions, it looks like Mariana Egerchikova, Toby Alexanderson and Caroline Ulrich are forging a bit of a gap there between them and the rest. But Celia Peria Pese not far behind. In fact, they're all pretty closely bunched. It looks like Tove Alexanderson and uh, Mariana Yegorchikova trying, well, of course they're trying, to uh, create a gap. Caroline Ulrich, though, hanging on. One of the youngest with one of the most experienced right there at the top of your screen, Mariana Yegorchikova. Certainly one of the oldest athletes on the circuit and just so still so unbelievably strong. Caroline Ulrich is still an under 23 athlete and uh, just shows you that this sport really is for everyone. Although it is unusual as we see Mariana Jaeger Chikova powering up these steps. Toby Alexanderson having had a bit of a, a, a bit of a unfortunate transition there. It is unusual to see athletes get better and stronger the older they get in the sprint. As Caroline Ulrich comes powering past the European and World Champion uh, to perhaps make her first win, but I just don't want to say that too many times or think it out loud because the commentator's curse is not a good thing. But she takes off very confidently, nicely ahead there of Mariana Yekichikova, who will absolutely not give any quarter here as Tove Alexanderson and Celia Peria Pese take off uh, behind them third and fourth respectively. But it looks to me from here like Caroline Ulrich is making a good gap between her and Mariana Egechikova, but I feel like Celia Peria Pese may just have sneaked in between the two of them there. I mean, this would be extrasensory perception for me at this angle, but uh, I feel like that's possibly what just happened. We shall see very, very, very soon. Mm, no, it is in fact Toby Alexanderson who came back there from sitting in behind. And Mariana Jaeger-Chikova has fallen quite far behind as Caroline Ulrich takes on Toby Alexanderson and could be coming in to win her first senior sprint competition. Looking, oh, don't tell me she's had a fall. Ooh, crikey, that was close. A little stumble there from Caroline Ulrich. Toby Alexanderson has popped into second and all Caroline, oh no, and she's, 
nearly gone down again. Is she having trouble with her gear? Oh my goodness, she's gonna have to hold it together because Toby Alexanderson is hot on her heels and I'm not sure whether she's properly into her boots. She's certainly lost a pole. But Caroline Ulrich is, oh my word, if she wins this under these circumstances, she's gonna have no pole though to help her come around that corner. But it looks like she has actually got a reasonable gap, but my goodness, Mariana Igorchikova is, or I don't know who that is in third, but it is going to be with only one pole. Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland takes her win. Oh my word, she can't believe it. How exciting. Second, Toby Alexanderson, Mariana Igorchikova, first to give congratulations to Caroline Ulrich as she takes, I think, her first win in a senior competition. Celia Pea Pesce. Uh, congratulating her she cannot believe it she's just so excited and that nearly wasn't that nearly didn't happen oh my word how exciting Mariana Yegichikova so thrilled for the young uh, Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland as she takes her first World Cup win unbelievably exciting congratulations to her Tove Alexanderson in second place after uh, a year away, what an incredible result for her. Mariana Yegorchikova in third place, still incredibly strong and will be defending her European title in about six weeks time. Celia Periapese, last year's third place athlete uh, in fourth, Lena Bonnell and then Marta Garcia Fares in fifth and sixth. But oh gosh, it's just been a little stumble there from Mariana Yegorchikova just been stumbles and slips and I mean you can tell that it's bad conditions it's poor not bad but poor conditions in terms of a lot going on but also let's not forget it is the first race of the season as Caroline Ulrich goes down and loses a pole it looks like she's got an issue with one of her boots and she still manages to power across that line, skating with no pole to help. And as I believe it, I think that is her first senior win in the World Cup. How unbelievably exciting. Congratulations to Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland. She has been training all summer with the Swiss Army, so hasn't actually been on skis for very long and going to an interview with Caroline Ulrich and Christine. Caroline Ulrich, congratulations. First victory in your career here in the beginning of the season in Val Torrance. What a smiling face for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, still on another planet. I don't believe it. It's just so unexpected, unexpected. And yeah, I was here to do as good as last year, so a tenth place or so. So going to the final and winning it just—I don't believe it. So it's a good beginning of this uh, season. For sure, very good. I hope it continues like that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, massive congratulations to Caroline Early, who seems quite overwhelmed by the fact that she has just beaten some of the world's best sprinters, uh, um, but absolutely well deserved for her. Um, she has been an absolute star in the under 18s and under 20 category, uh, a, a youth Olympic champion. And so it is actually uh, quite fitting that. Uh, you know, this time should come and uh, a massive congratulations to her. I think we are going very shortly to the flower ceremony for the women before we head off to the men's final, which I'm sure the women will be enormously grateful for because I imagine they want to get out of this cold, snowy weather and get warmed up and uh, get themselves ready for those that are in the relay race tomorrow because we will be back tomorrow live streaming again. More about that to come later, but uh, the mixed relay, the first one of the season, 
is tomorrow. There's Mariana Yegochikova getting her third place. Toby Alexanderson back on the circuit and back on the podium. How extraordinary. What a great comeback for her. She uh, thought that she might just do this event and the European Championships and then see how she goes. I'm hoping that this will have given her some confidence and uh, motivation to keep going for the rest of the season. And Caroline Ulrich takes her first victory in the senior women's category of the women's uh, of the World Cup here in Val Thorens. An unbelievably exciting result for the young Swiss woman. A massive congratulations, Caroline Uli, Tovi Alexanderson, and Mariana Yegochikova, the top three women, the first flower ceremony of the 2023 24 uh, season here in Val um, As I say, the next place that we will be will be in uh, the European Championships. That will be the next sprint race in January. But before that, let's not skip this. The final for the men, Oriol Cardona Col of Spain, Romain Galando of France, Ivan Arnold of Switzerland, Arno Lieta, his compatriot, Inigo Martinez de Albornoz Marquez of Spain, and Thibaut Selmé, last year's overall winner of France. And it looks, I was about to say it looks like it's calming down, but I can see the flags at the top are still billowing away, fluttering in the wind. You can also see on the lift there that Valterance is open to the public. It has been open since this morning, first day of the season, as well as hosting a World Cup. Busy weekend for the best ski resort in the world, as it is now, has now been renamed after having lost it two years in a row to Verbier, which did not please them very much, I can tell you. But they have it back, and that, I think, is their seventh or eighth win in ten years. Uh, very impressive, indeed. Waiting to come out now are the best of the men sprinters. We have on the left there Robin Galando of France. That is Oriol Cardona Call coming out now. Oh, was so smiley, so chatty and charming. And there is Robin Galando of France. Arno Lieta of Switzerland. Inigo Martinez of Spain. And Ivan Arnold of Switzerland, and last but absolutely not least, Thibaut Anselme of France. And just showing them all out there, telling them where to go, was Olaya Chernuda of the ISMF. Here we are. On the left there, Ivan Arnold. Next to him, also from Switzerland, Arnold Lieta, Robin Galando of France, Oriol Cardona Call, and Inigo Martinez of Spain, and Thibaut Anselme of France. So, an interesting mixture to Spaniards, to Frenchmen, and two Swiss athletes. This will be very, very fast. Thank you, Mark. Set. Oh, no! And Oriol Car Cardona Call is down out of the gates. 
adding to the drama of this day in Val Thérence. And he would normally expect to have been right out at the front there, but it is in fact his compatriot, Inigo Martinez, Martinez, who goes out in front with Arno Lieta. But given the form we've seen from... There we go. Uh, he is already up an atom. I'm wondering if that even was uh, Oriel Cardona call that went down. But <laughs> maybe my eyes deceived me. However, first into transition. Looks like the two Spaniards, Oriel Cardona call, followed by Inigo Martinez, Arnolieto, Robin Galando, but it's Martinez out first. Oh, look at this. It's Oriel Cardona call. I beg your pardon. It is Oriel Cardona call up onto the steps, followed by his compatriot, Inigo Martinez, Robin Galando of France. The Swiss athletes. There we go. Arno Lieta first in. Thibaut Anselme. Robin Galando having a bit of a skins issue as it lets the two Spaniards out in front, followed by uh, Arno Lieta. And Robin Galando in third, I think. We will hopefully get, there we go. That's what we like to see. A little bit of who's coming into the top transition and it is Oriel Cardona call ahead of Ar uh, Inigo Martinez. Robin Galando, Thibaut Anselme, Ivan Arnold, and Arno Lieta right in at the back. All change as the two Spaniards followed by the two Frenchmen and the two Swiss make their way back down. And it looks like all being well, this is going to be a first win of the season for Oriel Cardona Call. And coming across the line to win the men's final here in Valterrance, Oriel Cardona Call of Spain, followed by Inigo Martinez del Bornos Marquez, Robin Galando, Thibaut Anselme, and then it will be the two Swiss athletes, Ivan Arnold and Arnold Lieta. A magnificent win there for Oriel Cardona Call. I am very keen to see the replay on this one. I don't know about you. I think it may have been Inigo Martinez who went down. Still a very impressive comeback, regardless. As Oriel Cardona Cole takes his first win of the season, he'll be absolutely thrilled with that. He spent a couple of seasons, two seasons ago, very excitingly battling head to head with Arnold Lieta. Um, and last year, season coming in fourth overall, Oriel Cardona Call takes the win for Spain, followed by his compatriot Inigo Martinez del Bornos Marquez, Tibon Salme of France, followed by Ivan Arnold of. Switzerland, Robin Galando down to fifth and Arno Lieta um, in sixth place. Interesting. I'm 
I thought that that was different, but perhaps there have been uh, penalties uh, given. We will have to wait and see. Yes, indeed, Rob Angelando picked up a 15-second penalty for what I know not, um, but that is unfortunate, and he went down to fifth place. <laughs> and so now, very soon, we will get the opportunity to speak to Oriel Donacol with Christine. As soon as that starts, as soon as that happens, I will stop talking and leave the mic to Christine. But what a day! And here they come. Christine Cavanier with Oriel Cardonacol. Oriol Cardona, congratulations for the first victory of the season. Despite uh, the problem, just after the start, you recovered so quickly and you arrived uh, to cross as first the finishing line. Yes, it's been a challenging race for me. At the beginning, I don't know exactly what I did, but I fell and I just tried to recover during all the race. And I just passed Inigo at the, at the end of the uphill, so it's been so hard for me, but I'm so happy because I feel in a good shape and I'm just ready for the season. A great, strong uh, Spanish team. Yeah, of course. I think this year Spanish team is going to be very strong, not only this year, for the years to come. So I think we are doing a, a great job there. Congratulations. Well, there you go. It was him falling. I thought so, um, but I couldn't actually quite believe my eyes. I don't know about you, but to have fallen at the front at the very, very start and made your way through the field to win... That's pretty impressive. But we had already seen in the heats and the semifinals that he was very much stronger than the competitors around him. So perhaps not unsurprising, but wow, what a superhuman effort there from Aurel Cardona Call. So we have our first winners of the season. Um, we have Caroline Ulrich for the women and from Switzerland and Aurel Cardona Call of uh, Spain in the men's and I'm sure any minute now we're going to go to flower ceremony and then shortly after that I will be leaving you and I will let you know what uh, what is coming up next but very exciting days racing here despite the pretty tricky conditions for everybody it's been cold and snowy and windy it looks like the wind has dropped slightly but uh, not, not that much difference now to be perfectly honest it is just a case of some photos and a way into the warmth for these athletes. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, I understood that Robin Galando had had a penalty and had moved into fifth, uh, but the the people on the ground have more information than me, so we will congratulate Roman Galando on his third place. Inigo Martinez from Spain in second. And I think the graphics team are also slightly confused, so apologies. Uh, we were expecting to see Thibaut Anselme up there in third place, uh, but in fact, uh, it is currently Robin Galando. Uh, I'm sure that we will be able to clear this up by having a good look at the socials and at the ISMF website later on, and you will be able to find out what actually uh, became of it. But something that cannot be denied or uh, changed right now is that Oriel Cardona Call takes the first men's win in the sprint of the 2023-24 season and um, uh, right up next to his compatriot Inigo Martinez after a fall right from the start. Unbelievable. So, so impressive. Thank you so much for joining us because what a great day. I mean, despite all the weather, despite what's going on, it's been very exciting. Sad to see uh, both Emily Harrop and Marianne Faton having such a um, sad ends to their first outings of this year of course but the year is young the next competition is not until the European Championships in the middle of January so plenty of time to recoup 
to look over uh, mistakes, to gain some uh, perspective and uh, be back stronger and better than ever. And to be fair, mistakes happen to everybody all the time. And we saw more than our fair share today on the first, I would say, probably more than I've seen in a long time, probably to do with the with the weather, but also that it's very early in the season. Um, again, here we have the results up for the men. I, I can't promise you <laughs> uh, that this is official, but um, Oriol Cardona call, Inigo Martinez, undisputed first and second. We think Thibaut Selmé actually was third in the end after Robin Galando was given a penalty, but please don't uh, quote me on that. We'll be back in January with the European Championships. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the festive season. We'll see you in the new year. Bye-bye.